Hello guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. Have you ever uh, been out on the lake and you're like, you know, I'm so tired of trying to steer this trolling motor, get it in the right spot, put an anchor down, and then, you know, try to reel on a fish and we're drifting in, this and that. Well, I got the perfect solution. Uh, recently, I, uh, I don't know if you're like me, you're a DIY guy. You're like, I can do that, I can make that, I can do it cheaper. I'm not going to pay those ridiculous prices. Uh, well, this is this is your video right here because I'm about to show you how to do this. Uh, cost effective, uh, very easy to do. If you don't have a 3D printer, there's parts online you can order. Um, or I may set up an Etsy shop later at some point down the line. But I'm going to show you how to do it at a decent price. Uh, I think altogether is about $350, and that's including the trolling motor and all the parts necessary. Uh, some of them I added were a little extra, weren't really necessary, but we're going to get right into it. And then um, I'm going to take it apart and explain all the parts to you so you can do it yourself. All right, guys, so here's the setup. Um, right now I just got a simple battery here. Normally you'd have something bigger to run this while you're out on the lake. That'll last you maybe one or two hours or something like that. Um, no old people were harmed during the making of this video. I borrowed this from my father-in-law. Um, he's fine. He doesn't really need it. But I'm going to show you here. Uh, basically it's all remote controlled. So we got right, left. Oh, just unhooked itself. That was cool. So we got right, we got left, and then if you look down here, throttle forward, and then we got backwards. You could do both at the same time, or if you don't want to go as fast. Pretty nifty. So we'll get into it and we'll take all this stuff apart and I kind of want to go over everything real quick. So basically you got a servo here. These are all 3D printed gears. This one right here is connected to the shaft and the servo turns this gear to turn you left and right. So we're going to get a breakdown on this and kind of give you guys an idea. If you think you can do this, I don't think it's that difficult to do but I'm always into trying to save money and do everything myself so we'll jump right into it all right guys so we got the uh, top undone and basically right here this is a uh, two parts here I found these fans on Amazon and they were five of them for like 10 bucks and I wired them into the pre-existing thing for the battery meter. So let's go ahead and take this off. Get that out of the way. And once we go inside, we have a few different things here. This is our RC controller. Same thing you'd see basically in an RC car. That's what we're using. Well, we can get it out of there. So this pairs with this. I bought this as a set. I'll try to put it as a link in the description. I don't get paid for any of this. I don't have any connections. I'm just trying to show you guys exactly what I use. I don't get paid for it. Uh, I'm just trying to hook you up. So this runs to the servo and the servo is down here. That's a DS5160 SSG. And that gives us our left and right. Now for the throttle control, we have this little guy here and it fits in this Minn Kota perfectly because there's like a little clip down here i'm not sure if you can see that but there's a little clip down there that just kind of holds it in place 
and this is an ESC. Uh, let's see. I can't read that, but it's an 880 dual brushed. Uh, there's an on and off switch on it. Uh, for me, not necessary. I don't, I mean, I just put it in there. I don't really use it. So there's two wires coming out of here. There's a yellow, a blue. Oh, actually there's four. I lied. So there's yellow, blue, red, and black. The yellow is going to go to your red wire. The blue is going to go to your black wire that's powered to the uh, motor down there. And with the factory wiring, there's two extra wires here that aren't necessary. Uh, these were part of the throttle control for the manual throttle control and the original design. What I did was I just capped them off, taped it up, kind of got it out of the way. Let's see if I can get a better view here with a little bit more light. So that's basically all the components, the electrical components, super easy to hook up. Uh, the servo goes in the first position and the throttle, yeah, the throttle, which runs to your ESC, that goes to the second position. Now there is another um, ESC controller or programmer that you can get. Uh, basically, if you want to make reverse uh, full speed, uh, you'll need to program that. It's super easy to do. I'm not going to do it in this video. Maybe I'll make another one if you guys are interested in it, but to me, it's not a huge deal. It's just extra money that is not really necessary. So yeah, that, I mean, it's pretty simple. That's all there is to it. And then you got your power wires going out that connect to the battery. So I'm going to take this apart and show you the 3D printed components here. I'll give you a closer look on that. Um, this is a file I found on Thingiverse. Um, I'll put, I'll try to put a link in the description for you. And I know they, if you don't have a 3d printer, there is a company, I think it's BC or something like that. They're like 50 or $60. I'm not sure. I had one, wasn't a huge fan of it. Ended up breaking on me. Um, had a lot of issues with it. It's just better. If you have a 3d printer, you can get one super cheap used online or whatever. Um, and you can print as many as you want. So with that said, we're going to take this further apart and then I'll show you the 3D printed parts. All right, guys, so we're going to get this up here on the workbench. I really don't want to take this thing all the way apart because it's kind of a pain it's kind of a pain in the butt but anyways so this is a part that I made the other day uh, my first try at uh, fusion 360 or whatever it's called uh, I designed this part because I was running into binding issues which later I found out there was a whole lot of things going on I had this mounted on the front of my pond prowler uh, and it was like this part was hitting when I was going left to right. I ended up having to add a one inch piece of wood spacer, uh, to push this out just a little bit from the boat worked out perfectly. And the other issue that I had was I actually tightened this down too much. And it was binding up on the pole that connects to the shaft. So it was making it difficult for it to turn. And I actually cracked some of the gears. So if you do put this kit together, keep that in mind. Uh, this is, you know, it's easy to mess up. Uh, but hopefully this video kind of gives you, you know, the information you need not to do that. Um, the bolts that I used, I bought a bolt kit online. I'm not exactly sure which one it was, but um, 
I know on the file there's a description of all the bolts and nuts that you need. So I'll try to put that in the description. Um, but basically there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five printed parts. And then on the inside here, there is uh, bearings to kind of keep everything. Oh, here we go again. This stupid thing. If you don't turn the remote off and it's not getting a signal, it starts going crazy on you. But uh, so the bearings um, kind of give you a, a quick uh, product number to look up. But I will put everything in the description if I can figure that out. But I'm going to try my best. It's a 5110. It's a 35 millimeter by 52 millimeter by 12 millimeter. And I think it was a four pack for $13. So if you and your buddies go in together, you could actually get everything cheaper if you got four buddies that want to do the same thing. Now the servo, um, I think that was like 36 bucks. And then the remote, with the receiver was $31. And then of course you'll need filament to 3D print it unless you buy the one online. Um, I'm not gonna link that one because I, I did have issues with it. Um, the other issue that I ran into, and I do have this file, I'm gonna try to correct it. Uh, I'm just learning Fusion 360, so it might be a while. Um, so what I did is I used an H-clip that's used for roofing and I bent one side out and I bent the other side in to kind of lock help lock this in place it wasn't turning or anything like that my issue was um, it kind of warped from tightening it down on the other side so to kind of counter that and with this you know I wanted a tight fitting up against here and not like pushed out to the side um, this is what I added in here. It's, I measured with my uh, uh, gauge, it was like 19 millimeters. So I'm gonna try to redo this bottom piece and have it come out another 19 millimeters down here and maybe reinforce it to like in the middle or somewhere like that. So that way, you know, it's just more durable. There's a lot of torque going to the servo. I mean, it's enough to break the 3D plastic. Um, I had that happen a couple times. Again, my own stupidity. Um, this part kind of helps with that. If you guys want this file, I'm probably gonna post it up on Thingiverse. It would be my first one I posted. So it's um, inside diameters like 30 millimeters, outside diameters like 40 millimeter um, and that's basically all there is to it now let's get this thing put back together and um, kind of go over some of the other parts All right, guys, so we got it all back together. I just wanted to show one more thing. Can't remember if I did or not, but the uh, battery meter is still functional. And the wiring for the fan, I actually incorporated in those clips. Um, super easy to do. Probably not necessary. I don't know if you can see it there. But it just kind of helps draw in some fresh air kind of keep things from overheating probably not super necessary but it's just something i added and it looks nice looks like it's supposed to be there again this ring was already there um, from their original parts and i found again i believe it was a 30 millimeter fan and it just happened to fit snugly right in there and it's serrated on the inside so it kind of grips onto it so it's not going to back out or anything like that and again 
might help if I turn it on. But uh, that's basically it. You can turn real slow if you want. Or super fast if you want to drive crazy. And then you got your forward. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on here. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions and concerns or if you think I'm crazy, comment that. Uh, if you don't mind, if you did enjoy it, you like my channel, I'm going to do a lot more bass fishing videos. I got some really good ones coming up with uh, me and a buddy. We're going to do competitions. Uh, me and my daughter, we got a competition. Um, if you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and give me a like. That'd be awesome. Uh, that's all I got, man. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, any questions, hit me up.